reality seems too difficult for us to face. We retreat behind defensive mechanisms. There was the girl who always explained that she really didn't want something. After she found out she couldn't get it. She was two-faced. Her mechanism was realization. Remember the boy who failed to make the team? It was because the coach didn't like him, so he said. For him, the fault was always someplace else. A dull tool, the wrong time, a stupid teacher. His defense mechanism is a special type of rationalization that we call projection. Remember the girl who could only disagree? She could only shake her head. Her defense mechanism was negativism. All of us are guilty of defensive mechanisms to some degree at some time. Knowing their dangers, we have a better chance to guard against them. When these poor defenses slip, and they always do, and we're face to face with hard reality again, we have other means of getting away. Remember the boy who couldn't dance, but who always brought a pint to the party? He was trying to escape from a sense of his own inadequacy. The next morning, he'd have a hangover, and he still couldn't dance. She was a daydreamer. She could dream that she was the most beautiful woman in the world. Time and time again, she could return to it, getting more beautiful with each dream. But every time she woke up, she was face to face with her own face. He identified himself with a welterweight champion. Every fight the champ won, he won. Every punch the champ took, he took. And he could take it. His escape mechanism was identification with somebody else. She thought that if you pretended a thing wasn't there, it might go away. If you pretended something hadn't happened, maybe it hadn't. If you hid the truth away, maybe it would turn out to be a lie. Her escape mechanism was suppression. He saw illness as a way out. A back way, true, but a way. When it was time to bring in the wood, his legs pained him. When the snow fell, something went wrong with his arm. And he loved the attention he got. His escape mechanism was malingering. The army calls it gold bricking. Too many of us refuse to face reality. Too many of us try to escape escape our duties and identities, our faces and our families. But all these things remain. All the realities remain whenever we leave our dreams and return to the real world. Michael Squires is such a person, pinwheeling through life, defenses held high, darting away from reality through the escape hatches of his emotional being. Essentially, every normal person wants to stand well in his own eyes and in the eyes of others. When he does not, then he'll seek ways to achieve that standing. Protective mechanisms offer the wrong route. Finding out what the trouble is, what sends us into defense and escape mechanisms, is the first step on the road back to reality and the satisfactions and rewards that can be found only in the real world. I remember promising you a few minutes at the end of this period to discuss your class dance. Well, I guess the time has come now, and I'll see you all tomorrow. So long. Okay. Little attention, please. Okay, now we got just about everything set. The dance will be the first week in October, Friday night. We've got Jimmy Barron and his boys for the music. But we're gonna have to pay him extra if it goes past midnight. Okay? All right, now look, let's get to the committees. As I'm chairman of the entertainment program, I'll assign you to various committees. But if you're not satisfied, you can overrule me. Is that okay? Okay. All right, uh, let's start with the decoration committee. Sandra? Helen? All right. Paul? Mike? Better count me out. Oh. Come on, Mike. Everybody else is helping out. No, leave me out of it. I'm pretty busy these days, doing some very important work at home. Don't tell us you're still at work on your great American novel. <laughs> it 
must be nearly finished by now. Oh, it's coming along. Well, look, we can't waste any more time. How about you, Hank? Well, I'm not much good on decorations anyway. There are probably a lot of other things I could do much better. It's okay, Mike, forget it. Now, we want to decide whether we want it to be formal or costume. Formal. Oh. Costume. Oh. Okay, hold it, hold it. Well, I just think that jeans and plaid shirts would be more colorful, that's all. Oh. Wait a minute, look, we'll take a vote on it. All in favor of formal, say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. No. Oh. Mike is hiding his sense of inadequacy and negativism. He was afraid of failing on the decoration job, so he refused. And now he's taking great pleasure from being coaxed to change his viewpoint. He's getting satisfaction from being the center of attraction. Okay, let's try to make it unanimous now. All those in favor of a formal say aye. Aye. Okay. That's it. <laughs> He always manages to make it tough. He's what Mr. Smith calls um, a negative. Negatist. I don't understand it. He just likes to have his own way. At home that night, Mike slips into another phase of his defense mechanism, that of rationalization. For some reason, he claims to be totally uninterested in the dance. He isn't even sure that he wants to go. All those guys rushing around, buttoned up to their chins in blue serge. Let's see. Mike doesn't want a new suit, and he probably implies that the music at such dances is never any good anyway. His sister suggests that probably none of the girls would dance with him. Girls. Just having Harriet around the house is all the girls Mike can stomach. Or so he claims. Girls are stupid and silly. He would be perfectly happy, so he says, if he never saw another girl as long as he lived. His sister has her own ideas on the subject. Sour grapes. Mike is finding out that no real defense against the hard realities of life can be found in negativism and rationalization. Face-saving, self-justification, deception. Why? Disappointment, discouragement, a sense of failure. Why? Insecurity, a lack of confidence, a feeling of inferiority. Why? Why? There are all kinds of reasons for such things, and there could be all kinds of results from them. Mike had many of his own reasons, and he had his own results. In some cases, Mike had taken little experiences, little things, and buried them deep within himself, carefully suppressed and kept from the healing light of day. <laughs> isn't he? The trouble is, if it's nerves, they never get over it. Mike never found out that the conversation was about a dog. The answer was so simple, but he's always kept the question buttoned up inside himself. Finding out what the trouble is, what sends us into defense and escape mechanisms. 
dreams is the first step on the road back to reality. If we can pour out our troubles and unhappiness to a sympathetic friend or a member of the family, then we can avoid keeping such things tied up in ourselves. Well, that's all for today. Got something on your mind? Well, the best place to get things on your mind is off. That may not be good English, but it makes good sense. I guess I haven't been making good sense. <laughs>